drunk. Good old Ocean Software. You could always rely on them to churn out games based on movies that were solidly mediocre at best. Sure, they'd stumble into making a decent game once in a while, like Jurassic Park, but then you got Lethal Weapon, Waterworld, The Untouchables, The Flintstones, The Addams Family. Those are all from Ocean Software, and they're all about the same level of quality. Which is to say, you can find something much better to do with your time. In 1992, they were tasked with creating a game based on Robocop 3, which is strange in and of itself considering the movie didn't hit theaters until November of 1993. But again, the results were predictable, another lousy game based on a movie, but what I find kind of funny is that Robocop is actually to blame for Ocean Software getting a hold of so many movie licenses in the first place. According to Ocean The History, a book by Chris Wilkins and Roger Keane that details the company's history, Ocean Software got a hold of the publishing rights in PAL regions for the NES port of the Robocop arcade game. It was a surprise success to the point that it got the attention of Warner Brothers, who tapped Ocean to produce a game based based on the 1989 Batman movie for computer systems like the Amiga, DOS, Atari ST, Commodore 64, and ZX Spectrum, and that game was also a huge hit. Eventually, lots of studios came to Ocean for the same treatment. Ocean even started buying the rights to older movies and developing games themselves. It's a solid business plan, but too bad most of the games themselves freaking suck. What's especially frustrating is that characters like Robocop should lend themselves perfectly to video games, but for whatever reason, they were rarely good. The first game on NES is okay at best, a solid 6 out of 10 game if there ever was one, but the other two Robocop NES games were just freaking terrible. But hey, this is the SNES, and it's a game starring an armored cyborg shooting bad guys and flying around on his jetpack. That should be fun, right? Nope. And the game wastes zero time letting you know what you're in for. Right when you start, you get enemies firing at you from off screen, tons of bullets flying everywhere, with slow ass Robocop demonstrating the agility of a cat wearing socks. I like how they make sure to make Robocop look all clunky and heavy, but he can still jump on wooden crates without them immediately splintering to pieces. That's some classic video game logic right there. You get a health meter with three lives and five continues to get through a whopping four levels, so there's no battery saver password system since this game normally takes something like 25 to 30 minutes to complete. Not that you'd actually ever want to do that, especially since this is a classic pick up and die game, which means from the very second you start the game, you have to be extremely careful about moving forward because there are enemies and bullets freaking everywhere. Sometimes you have to duck, sometimes you have to jump, sometimes you gotta flip to your special weapon, but that has limited ammo, so sometimes you gotta punch, but you have to be as precise as possible because your life runs out real fast. Seriously, you gotta start this game by just barely inching forward pixel by pixel, learn where each enemy is located, and then hope that you get at least a tiny bit further than the last time you died. This approach can work in some games, like Super Ghouls and Ghosts, it just doesn't work in this game. Robocop is too slow and stiff to control, enemies can kill you from off screen, and you can even accidentally blow up your own power-ups. Get out of here with that! You also gotta start the entire level over again when you die, there's no checkpoints here. At least they kept the controls simple, it's B to jump, Y to shoot, A to punch, and the L and R buttons to flip between power-ups you pick up, like a spread gun, a laser, and a missile launcher. The game even throws in a couple overhead vertically scrolling shoot 'em up sections where you use your jetpack to fly around and blow up mines and drop bombs onto enemies beneath you, onto what looks like one of those city playmats that you remember from preschool. This part of the game isn't terrible, it's just kind of boring, but it is better than the side-scrolling levels which get real tiresome, with enemies popping up and firing at you in the span of two-tenths of a second. So yeah, to its credit, Robocop 3 for Super Nintendo is better than the movie, but then you could also argue that getting a root canal with a chainsaw is better than the movie. The game really isn't all that bad, it's just that the balance of speed between enemies, projectiles, and Robocop is completely out of whack, which makes for a really frustrating playthrough that really isn't worth your time. And if you're curious about the Genesis Edition, it's pretty much the exact same game, so in my opinion, I think you gotta avoid both 16-bit editions of Robocop 3 any way you can. Alright, that's all for now. I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.